Interface Video, in cooperation with Fairfield Federal, presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, the Frankie Smith Funeral Home, Fairfield County Adam H., Dagger Law, and the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities. Hello friends and welcome to Fairfield Today. Paul Jasson with you. Thank you for joining us and uh, we're well into the uh, post-holiday time. The, the January kind of blahs here. Everything is just kind of, you know, you get a little snow, you get some dark days. Everything's kind of brown when you drive around. We're just kind of in hold now until spring hits and uh, we, we hope that comes earlier rather than later. So we thank you for joining us here. We're in downtown again in the lobby of Fairfield Federal. Pleasure to have on with us. Uh, again, it's always fun to have new people on, and uh, I guess this is, I don't know how you term this, an old old person that's been here before or a new guy that's never been on before. Uh, Steve Gayfield may be familiar if you look at him. Uh, to some, you were formerly the superintendent of the parks, but that's been like a lifetime ago now, what, seven years or something like that? Seven years. Yeah, uh, formerly uh, superintendent of the parks. He leaves for a little hiatus. Now he's back again and joining Lancaster, and everybody's excited to have you back. Uh, welcome, first of all. Thank you. Everything changed much since you've been gone for seven years? Um, it's grown. It's grown. It's, it's, and it's a pleasure to see the, the growth in the community. Um, new businesses downtown that weren't here. When well, I, when the downtown would have changed dramatically. Yes, for yes. You. And the mid-off was just getting underway when I left, so um, here we it's, go. it's a pleasure to see it's done. And, and I know you know Brad and the things he's done in the community. Yes, he's absolutely. Been, he's been a, Brad Hutchison has been you know just a wonderful part, and I'm sure with the parks you'll have you'll have a great thing. So you were out in a couple different places in these seven years? Yes, yes. I actually left, I went down south. Okay. Um, went to Louisiana, a uh, community called Sulphur, Louisiana, which is just outside of Lake Charles. I think Texas side, not New Orleans, uh, but on the Texas side. I um, spent basically six years there. Um, survived two hurricanes, um, yeah. which was quite, a, quite an experience and one that I don't care to repeat. <laughs> um, but really enjoyed my time in Louisiana. Learned how to make jambalaya. Um, I love Zydeco music now. If you've never listened to Zydeco music, well, you do. should. The, 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 the festival used to have, now they've uh, moved that to where the tribute bands are on like a Wednesday night. But that okay. used to be Zydeco music. And that was always, I mean, I yeah. love that very much. So now we know where the parks will be getting into jambalaya soon. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Actually, I made the commitment that once all my stuff gets here, which is still on the way, still sure. on the highway, Sure. Um, get all my spices and everything, I did commit to making the park staff um, oh. a batch of jambalaya. So. You'll, you'll be on their good side forever. <laughs> all on their good side forever. So so then you left Louisiana for a short time. Yep, went to California, mm. a community called Auburn, and it was a, it was a great community. Um, great, I went to a county, and I actually, they hired me to start their first Parks and Recreation Wow, I bet um, that was program. interesting. It From was. here that one that was so established you worked in before and now to begin it all over. Yeah, it was it was a challenge. It was a lot of fun. Um, they had they had existing parks. They just didn't have a parks department. Mm -hmm. So um, very talented staff that came from the public works department I got to work with. It was a huge county, um, very diverse, very, very diverse, all the way from the edge of Sacramento all the way up to Lake Tahoe. Oh boy, so that's, that's big, big. Yeah, big gargantuan area. Um, had parks on Lake Tahoe, actually had beaches on Lake Tahoe. Really? So it was a struggle when we left because, you know, when I could spend a day and say, oh, I'm going to the office and go to Lake Tahoe. If you've never been, you need to go because it's gorgeous. Um, but, you know, that was a, it was a, it was a good, it was a good move. It was an opportunity to do something different, um, get them on their feet and they're, they're moving forward now. I had a great assistant who's kind of taken over, taken the reins and uh, they're they're moving quickly out there so california is a different type of state oh, yeah. too it's a uh, it's a lot of fun there's a lot of neat stuff a place to, do. to visit but yeah. at least in my world yeah. that's that's how i'd look at it <laughs> well we're glad you're back here uh, like you it. did great things here uh before and you were involved in so much of the community and, and again something you know the parks uh have their hands in almost everything in the community it's, it's amazing anything from uh, young people's athletics to uh, pickleball I mean you guys uh, kind of do the whole gamut of anything every every month there's something different going on something 
something wild and crazy the parks have gone on Christmas just came through Christmas and you just weren't involved with much of that but I'm sure you knew what that was that's become a big deal with Alley Park yeah that is so big so so as you look at the Parks Department now I, I would say probably in the last seven years they've grown also mm -hmm. absolutely and that was one of the attractions to coming back. There, there was a couple of really attractive things. First, Lancaster's always feel like home to us. Yeah. Um, our son, well, we're my wife and I are both from Missouri originally. Our son graduated from high school here. Um, we lived here for several years, and it's it's a homey town. It's yeah. a place people. Yeah. It's a place you want to call home. Yeah. So that was attractive. But the other attraction was the parks department is really at the brink, at the cusp of being able to even do more for the community. Um, we've always have been involved, even when sure. I was here before. We, sure. you know, and the community here loves the parks. Absolutely, um, and it it shows. It shows. We with, passed a levy. Yeah, we <laughs> passed a levy while I wasn't here. That was, um, that was, you know, very but, beneficial and very beneficial. Badly needed. Yes. Um, it's an opportunity beyond just that, though, to to really move forward mm -hmm. with the parks and recreation mission, um, being able to touch the lives of the residents and the park visitors that come in. Um, it was just between those two things, it was kind of a no-brainer when they called me and we talked about coming back. Nice, nice. Uh, do you see some changes? Uh, maybe not intermediate. We're get, again, we're into the winter time, although it's not terrible winter right now. We're going to get some winter. Uh, maybe come the spring, do you see uh, making some changes, doing things a little different the Steve Gayfield way? Um, right now, I'm just kind of trying to assimilate everything. Sure. So I, I'm sure there will be some changes that come and we'll... There's always new and better ways to do things, and I'm always willing to listen. So, you know, if somebody's got an idea, call the Parks Department. We're willing to listen to you. Well, I, I will tell you, there's no lack of people that will tell you how to run the parks. <laughs> I see comments all the time. Everybody always got a better way of the mousetrap. You yeah. know, everybody thinks they can do it. But some of them, I'm, I'm sure, they, they do have good ideas, and many of them are, are really uh, taken to heart. They, yeah. they mean it. They, well, could we do this? We do that. And we were just talking before, before we went on the air here. Uh, uh, the Lancaster uh, Parks and Recreation Department is is over Olivedale. They they are the mm -hmm. kind of the parent yes. group of that. And something I just saw, where and I had no idea. Just in the past week or so, I've uh, been shown to me how big pickleball is yes. in, in not only this community but around. And now Olivedale is building outside pickleball courts what behind it there and in the, in the lower levels yeah if you mm. if you think of Olivedale, Olivedale Senior Center mm -hmm. it's actually a park also and behind Olivedale itself off of the parking lot um, is where those pickleball courts are going to go they're under construction right now the now there's a little concrete thing out there is it near that um, there's a shelter it's yes. below the shelter okay below, below the shelter so if you think the bike path we're kind of wraps around the bottom part of Olivedale right. Park right and then up by the parking lot is a shelter. It sits below the shelter between the bike path and the How shelter. many are they going to build? Um, six, I believe. So outdoor courts. Outdoor courts, absolutely. Uh, and, and I gather that that, that is where it's at right now. It and is. you come from California mm -hmm. where it apparently was already big. Yeah, it was huge I and mean, huge. And people would wait hours to get court time to play pickleball. It's a, it's a great sport for folks who... Um, if you got joint problems, it's not quite as it's not as physically demanding as tennis can right. be. Um, but you're still active, you're still moving. It's great exercise. It's very challenging if you're playing yes. playing with some good. There's some very great players in the right. area in, in this right. area. I understand yes. and all over the place. Right. And it is the again the fastest growing sport in the country. Mm. Louisiana, there was a huge demand for it, and we actually were getting ready to meet it. Um, we were renovating, unfortunately, renovating one of our parks. That got demolished uh -oh. by the hurricane. Uh oh. So, but that gave you the opportunity to go in sure. and talk to people and say, okay, what do you want? And pickleball was by far one of the largest demands. And and you were here when uh, Alley Park has been such a big part of the yes. of the parks here. And I mean, there's stuff going on anywhere from breakfast to, to walks out there. And and I know they're building some trails out there. That's become really a huge part of the Lancaster Parks. Yes, and it will continue to be. Um, nature education, if you look, oh. well, one of the things the parks uh, just finished up and are, we're just looking at now is our needs assessment. And parks and open space, green space, um, was oh. very high on the list. Um, and you, as you look at it, I'm still reading it, so I haven't made it through the document yet. Uh, but that was one of the big demands. And Alley Park is a, a great place to, to meet that demand. Um, it's nice and quiet. Besides the event center, you know, being able to hold weddings and all the things out there for the rental space, the trails. 
Um, the trails go up the Twin Lake. The trails that wrap around behind, the, you know, the area back there. Mm. It's close to town. It's not like you have to drive down to Hawking Hills or one of the state parks. You've got a space right side of side of town where you can do some hiking, do some nature education. Well, Charlie, when he donated that land out there, I'm sure this is exactly his thinking about yes. what he would like to have seen there. Uh, he had a daughter in my class in high school. Uh, mother was Loretta, Lake Loretta. Yeah. That's how all that was named out there. But uh, with the lodge out there, I know now it's used for all kinds of things throughout the year. Yes. I mean, it's 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 sort of like the fairgrounds. It used to be just for the parks, and now, I mean, wedding and, and all kinds of things are going out there. Yes, yeah, it's constantly busy, constantly being used. Um, encourage anybody who's interested to contact the parks department because it fills up quickly. Like I can remember in years past, I mean, there's almost no weekends after a certain point. It do, it's not very long into this point on, yeah. they're filled up. So if you if you have a need for one, get in now. Get in, get in and get it done. Uh, yeah. I think graduation season fills up, all the you know family reunions, all that fun stuff you do at the parks. Again, going back to how we touch so many different ways and, and pieces of lives of the residents here. Shelter reservations are a big part of that. And, I, and I'll and i give a plug here, too, to uh, a few years ago, it sort of like, looked like uh, Miller Pool was going to go down. It, it wasn't looking good. And, it, and again, I'm a West Sider, grew up on the West Side. I, The Y and Miller Pool were places I just lived at. It was like a quarter to get in. You could spend all day at the yeah. pool. You didn't have a fence around it. It was just Miller Pool. That's, that's where, and there, there was no tiki. There was just Miller, Miller Pool. pool. But uh, the parks now had, in the last few years, have put money into it. They, you've got some other things are on the edges around the outside of it. And even with all the things that are going on now at Miller Park with the water department moving, that's still going to be down there. So I will say uh, congratulations on the parks for keeping that going. And, and, and another thing I'll tie into that, I can't think of name now up up on High Street across from Castaways. What's the park up there called? Keller Kern. Keller Kern Park. I remember when that was opened up. That place is disc golf. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's just no place the parks aren't involved. Yeah, it, Keller Kern's a great park. Miller's a Miller Pool. It's great that we can keep it open. Oh, I'm yeah. gonna, I'm gonna put a plug in. It's never too early to start thinking about being a life, uh, lifeguard over the summer. I know that's we, always an issue these we days. We always need lifeguards. Yeah. So if, if anybody's interested, yeah. watching the program, make sure to come out and, and we'll we'll work with you and we'll try to get you in. Steve Gayfield, who is uh, uh, the uh, superintendent of the Lancaster City Parks was there before and, and Lancaster Parks and Recreation was wise enough to when they had an opening to ask him to come back so it's going to be a challenge and you knew that coming in you got so many irons in the fire again I don't know of any almost any venue or place in the community that uh, touches more lives than what the parks does from the very young to the to the older people so uh, best of luck on that and we'll have you on bunches of times and uh, it's always going to be a fun ride. We know that. Absolutely, and thank you for having me. Sure, appreciate sure. the appreciate the uh, time and all oh, and effort always. and all you all you do. Oh here. well, we, we we love the parks. Thanks for all you do with the parks. We'll have you back on. Right. Steve Gayfield with Langston Parks. We'll be back on Fairfield today in just a moment. You walked down the aisle and promised happily ever after. Sometimes happily ever after means ending a relationship. We know the conversations are not easy. Deciding what's best for you, your children, and your next steps takes work and communication. At Dagger Law, we know there are no monsters in a divorce, only people trying to find their way. Local, trusted, experienced. Dagger Law. I want a doctor who listens to me. From primary care to specialty medicine, we put your needs first by treating you like a person, not a number. Our primary care team will help you identify your health care needs and set goals for success, regardless of where you are in your wellness journey. We care for patients of all ages, with offices that are close to you. Whatever you're searching for, you can find it at Fairfield Medical Center. When I volunteer, you know, when I come over here, you know, the first thing I think about is my dad. Yeah. But then also think about all the people that helped us when we were here. Something brings me here, and I feel that it's my dad's spirit. He wants us here. He wants us to give back because of what I did for him. And I think that's helped me with a lot of my grief. Uh, the support 
of the people here and the volunteers. Mm -hmm. yep. That makes it a great place. Hi, I'm Sheriff Alex Lake. In my 30 year law enforcement career, I have seen many different trends in illicit drug trade and substance use disorders. Fentanyl is the deadliest drug that I have ever encountered. Very minuscule amounts can be fatal. Fentanyl is present in most mainstream illicit drugs. Drug cartels are now pressing fentanyl into forms that appear to be common candies. Ingesting any of these fake candies or pills can have fatal overdose effects. This ongoing drug epidemic requires a balanced approach. We must focus our attentions and resources on treatment and education in conjunction with enforcement efforts that hold those who traffic in dangerous drugs accountable. For your sake and the sake of your family, do not take any medications that are not issued through prescriptions by your pharmacy. Thank you. This message is brought to you by the Fairfield County Adam H. Board. The Frankie Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster and 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. Fairfield Federal. When it comes to our customers and our community, we go above and beyond to help. Our people make the difference. It's a hometown bank. Uh, it's located here in Fairfield County. Um, branches are convenient. They're located here in Pickerington where my office is. Uh, I'm in Lancaster a lot and they have plenty of branches there. And I much prefer dealing with the hometown banks rather than the larger nationwide chain banks. So far everybody's been so personable and for us to bank with the local bank and we bank in Lancaster it's been so wonderful because we'll call somebody, Steve will call somebody, and they'll get back to us right away. Or they'll say, okay, we're going to make a decision in the basement tomorrow, and right. they'll get back to us rather than calling a bigger bank where we had to wait and we didn't always get the person, the same person the next time we called for an um, investment banking opportunity or you know, getting something appraised, any of those kind of things. Everybody is very uh, customer friendly. Um, a lot of times I'll bring my dog Bear with me and uh, the staff um, love him here. And uh, of course he loves them and the treats that he gets. Uh, and uh, so it's, it's just a nice kind of a family type environment. Personal or business banking, whatever you need, we take it seriously because we know you do. Stop by today at any of our three locations and see why the difference is clear. Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan specializes in banking that revolves around you. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Pleasure to have Steve Gayfield on with us here at Fairfield Federal and on Fairfield today. Uh, nice to have him back in the community. He'll do a great job with the parks. He was great seven years ago and he'll be great now. So I'm, I'm looking forward to a kind of a long tenure now to have Steve back on. We have the parks on a lot because they do so much in the community. And when you talk about places that are busy, we've, we've got two of them today on this show. We had the, uh, the Parks Department on and now the Fairfield County District Library involved in tons of stuff. And it's a pleasure to have on the director of the Fairfield County District Library, Becky Shade, my favorite librarian. Let me say that up well, front. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Well, it's, it's always a pleasure to have you on, uh, boy. And I don't know if we don't have you on enough because when we do, you just got a boatload of things going well, on. Maybe that's all the time. Oh uh, well, it is all the time. But anytime you want me on, you just give me a call. I'd be happy to come on she's, the show. She's wonderful. You can walk down. Maybe yeah, not today with right. a little bit of rain outside. <laughs> but uh, uh, how are things in the library? Is an overview wonderful. busy? Wonderful. Yes, exactly. Getting busier all, every day. Our door counts up. Usage really? is up. So um, really returning Getting kind of back pandemic to, to levels. Yep. Uh, we have full scale programs like you're used to seeing at the library. Mm -hmm. um, um, everything is is great. It's great. And and I've asked this to most people that I've have on kind of post COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, are there things? And I'm going to guess you'll say yes mm -hmm. that you had to do because of COVID. They push you into it. I know. You, I'm sure your Zoom meeting now. Sure, you, if you never do sure. that again. But there are other <laughs> things that I'm sure yeah. the library was forced to do in terms of. I know you, how you check 
books out now. Sure. Things are different. Mm -hmm. Are there things you still do because you found that was a better way? We did. We um, started during the pandemic curbside pickup. So oh. where people can pull up to the library. If you've got materials on hold, you give us a call. We'll check them out on your account and bring them out to you. Nice. Um, and that was a necessity during parts of COVID. Yeah, that was very uh, nice. But it's something that we've kept around because it is so nice for maybe elderly people who don't want to come into the building for whatever reason. Moms who have sure. kids napping in the back don't seat. Don't have to get out of the van. If you've just got a few minutes. Um, if you've got materials on hold, give us a call. We'll, every library location does it. We've got a sign outside so you can see the number there. Um, we'll grab your holds from the shelf, check them out to your account, bring them right out to you. Now on my way here today, I come down uh, Broad Street right there and I see the lockers out yes. in the parking lot. And yes. What's that about? So those are hold pickup lockers. Also something uh, that we added to Main Library during COVID. Um, we actually got funding uh, from uh, COVID relief funds sure. to be able to do that. And what those are, it's, it's similar in the curbside pickup. So they're for items uh, to pick up holds for customers. So if you select uh, the lockers, the main library pickup lockers, that's where your hold will go. Oh, okay. Um, we'll check it out to the customer's account, uh, put it in the locker, you'll be notified that it's there. We have the receipt in there for you so you know when it's due. When, from the customer experience, you walk up and scan your library card, the correct door pops open and your materials are there. And of course, because it's outdoors, outside of the library there, um, it's 24-7. You're yeah. available all the time. Yeah. Um, we also have lockers at our Baltimore branch okay. and at our Millersport kiosk. It must be a, a good addition then. You're pleased it with is. the usage. Yes, absolutely. I'd like to add them to all of our branches, okay. honestly, because customers love them. We have 40 bays um, at the main library, and they're always in use, always in use. Um, we've not kind of gotten to max capacity. We've been full a few yeah. days, yeah. Um, but it's got a nice turnover. That's been a good number for us. Very good. Uh, and one thing, uh, and I think it says uh, something new is the library app. I don't know how new it is, but to me it's new, but mm -hmm. uh, it's really a cool feature. It is, it is, and we've only rolled it out in the last maybe two months, so I would consider oh, really? it very new. Yes, really? absolutely. Um, and if you are interested, if you you know use your library card, if you go to programs, I would encourage you to download the app. Of course, it's free on the mm -hmm. Google Play Store, on the Apple App Store. Sure. The easiest way to find it is just search for FCDL, um, but you can put in Fairfield County Library. Any yeah. of those will pull it up. Um, you'll see our logo there. You download the app, and from there, it just opens up a lot of opportunities. You can put in your library card number yeah. and your PIN number, which is always a four-digit number. That'll connect it to your library account. You can see the items you have checked out. You can see the items you have on hold, what their status is. You can place items on hold. Um, you get a digital library card um, as part of the app. So just like if you have your Kroger card and you pull up that app, you, you can have a digital version of it. Just like that for the library, which I've been told um, is one of the best, most popular things on the app currently. Really? People really like that because if they aren't carrying their wallet, they still are carrying their phone. Oh. Um, so they're able to use that just like you would your library card you to check out materials. Mm -hmm. nice. Yep. Um, you can search for any library location. It'll give you directions to our branches, give you the hours, all of those things. Um, if you have a question about, you know, we just got off of the holidays. So, of course, there were some days that the library was closed. If you ever weren't sure, that always has up-to-date information on hours. It's oh, amazing. Yeah. And our programs are all listed on there as well. Um, you can view programs. You can register for them. Um, so if a program requires registration, you just hit it. It's got Very your information. Interactive. Yep, very easy. Um, one thing I like to do is filter the programs on the app. So maybe you are only looking for programs for preschool age children. You can select that and you'll only get programs for that age group. You can nice. only get programs for a certain location. You don't so have to look through everything. Because there is a lot, you yes. know, granted, there is a lot. So if you only want to see what's going on at the Baltimore branch, you can do that. Only want to see what's going on at Maine. Or if you want to see what's going on everywhere for a kid in, that's a school ager, sure. for example. Yep, you can do all of those things with the app. Well, it's a new library app, I'd, and again, it must be easy to get because I have it. So <laughs> if, if I've been able to download it, then it's, and again, if it's only pretty new, I must have somehow must have talked Sorry. to you and knew mm -hmm. about it was on there, but it, yeah. it's really a cool thing. Yeah. Lots of stuff on there. One of the things I do like, sorry, yes? I just, I can't keep talking, I talk about it, I can't talk about it enough, 
if you are out somewhere, maybe at a bookstore, maybe um, at any kind of store that's selling books, you can scan the ISBN. Um, so that's that barcode on the back of a book. And in the app, if you scan that, it will pull up the library's record for that item. And you can put it on hold right from there. So yeah, you... see where it is, wow. put it on hold. Wow. Um, that's nice. That is so cool. <laughs> for a big reader, that's really nice. That is, that is great. So the library is anywhere you happen to be. Absolutely. Nice. Absolutely. Nice. Another, another feature that the library's got really gotten involved in are museums, and certainly Lancaster downtown right here. We have tons of them right near where we are, and you're involved in those, but also some ones not necessarily in Lancaster. Yeah, yeah. So just a few years ago, we started circulating museum passes. Our very first one was the AHA Children's Museum when great, they were still downtown. Great place. Absolutely. These are wonderful. You come into the library, check out a museum pass with your library card, um, and each organization runs a little bit differently because they're all different <coughs> museums. Um, we just added Franklin Park Conservatory and the works in Newark um, to our collection, but we also have the Ohio Glass Museum, Fairfield Heritage, which I will say is closed for the season right now, but when they open back up in April, um, you'll be able to borrow passes for the Sherman House and the Georgian. Um, Dawes Arboretum, the Columbus Museum of Art. Mm. Really great, I mean, a huge money savings for a family. If you were thinking of going to the Columbus Museum of Art, for example, um, their pass treats you like a member, so you get into the members' exhibits for free, um, into the museum for free, have free parking um, any day of the week. It is nice. outstanding. They are really interested in being able to make that museum open to everyone, just like all of these museums were interested in that. And this is one way they can do that. Uh, I'm sure that's turned out to be a tremendous benefit it for is. the Fairfield County District Library. It is. It is. Yeah. We get people um, that maybe haven't been to the library for a while or thought, you know what, maybe that's not for me. I, You know, they don't have, you know, for whatever reason, sometimes people maybe don't come in for a little while. They hear about that and they're like, you know what, I'd like to save a little money. I'd like to visit this museum or that museum. I'm going to go. Um, so yeah, we were excited to add Franklin Park Conservatory uh, just before the holidays yeah. because it is a beautiful place and, and a great uh, destination. All this information is available on the website. Oh, of course, which, absolutely. Which museums are, yes. are mm -hmm. out there? Yep, and it'll give you details for each of the passes because some of them are good for longer periods of time, that kind of thing. You spoke a little earlier about the, the feature now where they'll come out, and I've actually used that during probably during COVID where they'll mm -hmm. come to your car, they hand you the book, and you sure. just move on. Mm -hmm. But there are things you involve with uh, out some of the outreach things like homebound delivery. Yes, yes. I love to talk about this because I think it's one of the most wonderful things the library does, <clears throat> but very few people know about it. So if you have, if you yourself or someone you know in your life um, is medically homebound for whatever reason, they are not able to come into the library and they live within the Fairfield County service area. So mm -hmm. you do have to live in our district okay. here, but it, that covers most of the county. Um, we will deliver for free library materials to you once a month. So we have a person who selects those items. You tell us what you like, if you need large print, regular print, you know, westerns, romance, mysteries, whatever you want. Um, anything that is a library material, we will be happy to deliver to you, place items on hold for you, all of it, just like a regular customer. Um, we will collect those items, check them out to you, deliver them once a month. So we'll bring them to your home, mm -hmm. collect the other items. You're the ones you received last month. We'll bring those back with us. Um, and it is it is a wonderful service and free at no charge. And this is for people that maybe have had surgery too. Yes. It doesn't have to be constantly homebound exactly. but home down at the moment right exactly maybe you just have a temporary condition you had knee surgery or something like that and can't get out of the house um, it's a wonderful service that we can sign you up for just on a temporary condition what I hear from caregivers is that it is they are very thankful to have one small thing off of their plate because so obviously that would be on them yes absolutely to go and choose materials and they already have a very full plate as yeah. a caregiver. Um, so we're happy to be able to provide library services in that way. Um, the people who sign up for it love it. You can find out more information on the website. Of mm -hmm. course, there, it says outreach services. The application is there. Um, but you can also just give us a call at the library and we'll be happy to mail you the an number application. The number is? 740-653-2745. And, and we were talking about that, but this also uh, uh, assisted living facilities oh, if sure. somebody's out mm -hmm. there or mm -hmm. nursing homes or yeah, daycares, absolutely. preschools. 
yes. So we deliver um, collections of materials to assisted mm. living in nursing homes already. But if you, there's an individual that you know is living in a nursing home and would like to have a collection that's just for them, mm -hmm. so materials that's delivered directly to them, we're happy to do that. That's no problem that's at all. That's the same thing. They'll yep. bring them out. Absolutely. Pick uh, them up. Every month. Yeah. Um, it can be audio books. It can be DVDs. It can be music CDs. It can be whatever whatever the library has. We're happy to bring is those that out. Has that caught on pretty well? It has. We always have a very steady amount. We probably circulate between 35 and 45,000 books a year, or materials a year yes. through that service. Wow. Um, so it is, right, that it is It like is quite big. a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, when we drop off collections of materials at daycares and preschools, um, picture books and that mm -hmm. kind of thing for teachers mm -hmm. to use, and that's all through that same department, outreach services. Uh, again, uh, just like the Parks Department, uh, the library is involved and just continues to get involved. It's just not, you know, when I was a kid, you were uh, across the street here, <laughs> mm -hmm. up where they pay parking tickets, at least you used to when Muni Court was there. Yeah. But that was the library, and I spent a ton of time there. They had one on the west side, which mm -hmm. is really a block from my house. I spent a ton of time there, but that was it. Right. I mean, that was right. it. Now the library is everywhere. It is everywhere. Yeah. It is everywhere. It's true. Um, you know, sometimes people will ask me, you know, are you worried that libraries are going to go away with the internet? I, I am not. I am not. You know, we have people waiting to get in our doors every single morning when we open. Yeah. We have people signing up for programs and filling up and coming in, using our spaces, borrowing materials, all of those things. I, I don't worry about the library not being used because I see, you know, the hundreds of thousands yeah. of people that use us yeah. every year. But we've got about a minute left, so not sure. a lot of time, but something that just started yeah. is the winter reading program. Yes. Just just started. Just started. Come on in and sign up. It is a free program for kids up to age 12. They track their reading so you can read whatever you like. It can be stuff you're reading for school, things you're reading for your own self, your own pleasure. Um, and they earn little prizes from our friends at the library for doing that reading. It's and just a desk a pet. And a desk pet, yes. My youth <laughs> librarians tell me this is the new cool thing. I will assure parents um, it is not alive. It is not an actual <laughs> animal of any sort for you to take care of, but it is something fun for the kids. So it, it's just started and it goes on through the end of February? That's correct. Yep, yeah. yep. And you can sign up anytime, anytime. We'd be happy to have you. So I guess really the key to all this is, is one of the ways to start is to get the app. Yes. If you don't have the app, mm -hmm. how many people, do you know how many people have downloaded it? Right, about five hundred so far and like I said it really is only just started yeah. in the last two months it'll be huge yeah the I, way think so. I think people want remote so. things done now mm -hmm. yep yeah. it makes it very easy because sure. it has all that information in one place but well, again the Fairfield District Library how many locations uh, five locations five. including Main Library Baltimore Bremen John's Memorial and Amanda and mm -hmm. our Northwest branch in Carroll and we also have our Millersport kiosk which is a self-service branch in Millersport and again but the library is wherever you are like if you're at a bookstore she says yeah. you, you look at the yeah. little bar code scan it you'll find out the right. library has it you can borrow, just, it, borrow it right then I mean it, it's amazing how it how uh, like you say I I think the library is here to stay and we're thankful for that yeah well Be thank you Becky Shade with the uh, Fairfield County District Library you do great work down there thanks thank you. we love all the librarians the Garrett Room wonderful place you're yes. involved in the community thanks yes. for all you do thank you I thank appreciate you. that thank you for joining us on Fairfield today Interface Video, in cooperation with Fairfield Federal, presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, the Frankie Smith Funeral Home, Fairfield County Adam H., Dagger Law, and the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities.